It looks like we know who the New York Mets big bad full-time designated hitter is going to be. As New York Mets are interested in Baltimore Orioles first baseman slash designated hitter Trey Mancini. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Mets being interested and linked to Trey Mancini and my thoughts on it, how he impacts the team, and what else the Mets could do with the Baltimore Orioles to improve this team even more. If you like this video, talking about the latest rumor and a hypothetical for the Mets, make sure to hit that like button out of the ballpark. Slide into the comment section. What are your thoughts on Trey Mancini and the other player from the Orioles I'm going to mention later? And what would you be willing to give up in a trade for Trey Mancini? And if you're new here, you want to help the channel grow, you always can subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. And if you're subscribed already, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a stranger, tell an Oriole, whoever it is. Whatever it takes to help the channel, it's always greatly appreciated. Thank you again for everyone who supported me since day one, everyone who watched the Angels Mariners video. And if you aren't subscribed, it doesn't cost anything, it'd be a nice gesture. Let's talk about Trey Mancini. There's been reports from a few different reporters, Pat Vergazzo and others, that the New York Mets are looking at Trey Mancini. He's somebody that they are interested in. And and if you watched on Andrew Acevedo's channel the other day, him and I were talking about some potential DH options for the Mets. And when Trey Mancini's name came up, he wasn't someone I was crazy about. He's someone I like. I think he could help. But I didn't think he'd be this big-time difference maker for the Mets that would give New York that really big power protection to bat right after P. Alonso and have another big home run threat in their lineup. My thoughts of that have changed a little bit now that I saw this image that was sent to me by a Mets fan from Mets Weekly. Look at Trey Mancini. He's a guy that with the changes that have been made to Camden Yards this year, and he's a guy that's been really a lucky when it comes to home runs and we look at this year's home run total of seven for Mancini it definitely should be more than that and then when you look at Mancini's baseball savant page you see the x woba above 90 percent you see the xba in the 90th percentile x slugging around the 89th percentile this is a guy that's been having a really good under the radar offensive season and when you look at the traditional numbers like i was looking at in that video i mean 280 average 356 on base 777 ops then he only had seven home runs i didn't know he was getting super unlucky he's better than the numbers suggest and one of the other fascinating things to me about trey mancini is his splits looking at him batting against right handers versus left handers He's hitting 282 against lefties compared to 278 against righties, but 808 OPS because six of his seven home runs have come against right-handed pitching. So he's a guy that he's not drastic either way. He's solid against a righty or a lefty, which is always good to have. I mean, for the Mets in particular, you would like someone who's really good against lefties, but I'll take somebody who's balanced. Now, the one thing about Mancini I'm still not crazy about is his numbers with runners in scoring position, 234 average and a 717 OPS. You definitely would like that to be a little higher because that's something that the Mets really need to bat after Pete Alonso because you know Brandon Nimmo, Starling Marte, Lindor, and Alonso are going to get on base. So when those guys get on, you want the guy batting after Pete to drive him in. Jeff McNeil has done a great job of that. He's one of the best guys in all of baseball with runners in scoring position, but Jeff McNeil doesn't always bat. If the Mets are facing a lefty, just sometimes McNeil bats eight. And like I said, you still want a, also a power presence batting after P. Alonso just to give the opposing team a little more fear. Because while McNeil's been really good, most of the time you're just looking at a single. And one of the other interesting parts about Trey Mancini, he is a great guy. He's going to be great in the clubhouse. We don't have to worry about him coming over and doing any crazy antics that will turn the fans against him and the clubhouse against each other. He's a guy that is so easy to root for. We know his story coming back from cancer. He's a guy that'd be a great fit on this team. I mean, his contract, only $7.75 million. He has a mutual option for next season. So if the Mets do indeed inquire Mancini, he does pretty well. He has that team option. You can bring him back for another year. And I think this is something that the Mets should really consider because when you look at the DH market itself, it really isn't all that. A lot of the bats that you would like are not going to get moved. You know, I love somebody like Brian Reynolds from the Pittsburgh Pirates, but he's going to cost so much. Meanwhile, a guy like Trey Mancini, he really shouldn't cost all that much. They should be able to get him for a reasonable price. The other guy I would like for the New York Mets to get, if they do indeed are making a trade with Baltimore, is Orange reliever Jorge Lopez. Lopez has had a huge year this year, 0.73 ERA. And if you go a step further, hard hit rate is good. x wob is good. X-ERA, x x slugging. I mean, barrel percentage. Whatever you want to look at, he's doing a really good job. He induces a lot of ground balls, which is exactly what you want from your pitcher. You obviously 
obviously do not want a reliever late games to be giving up home runs and a bunch of fly balls drew smith for example and his sierra is 291 which is something that the nerds love so i guess that's good enough for me i think that this is exactly what the mets need they need a guy they could trust late in games that every now and then could get some closing opportunities if they're going to use edwin diaz in the eighth inning or if edwin diaz isn't available because it's very rare they pitches three days in a row the mets definitely need another high leverage reliever obviously they need another big bat the mets would be able to help two of their weaknesses all in one move now if you do throw jorge lopez into this mancini deal it's gonna cost a little more but for a team that's in win now mode i mean this is something they really should consider and jorge lopez is not a free agent until 2025 so it's gonna cost quite a bit but the mets do need a reliever that is under team control because when you look at this bullpen edwin diaz seth lugo trevor may adam Adovino, chase and shreve joelie rodriguez just about every single pitcher in the new york mets bullpen outside of drew smith is going to be a free agent this season a lot of these guys they're in their 30s now Adovino, lugo may they don't have that many good years left in them. You want to have some young building blocks that you could trust in the future, and you would hope that Jorge Lopez could be part of that equation. And one of the things that's really got people talking is the fact that Trey Mancini is not in the Orioles lineup tonight, the day after already having an off day yesterday. So that leads to some speculation. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be traded tonight, but who knows? Maybe the next couple of days it could happen, and I want it to happen now. I don't want to wait till August 2nd. It is clear the Mets have a need at DH. It is clear they have in the bullpen do something now screw the deadline i mean you have this opportunity you're only up three and a half games on the braves why not increase the lead why not give yourself some cushion because i can't watch dom smith anymore i don't want to watch ender and Ciarte. and escobar has been struggling i can't take it anymore do something now, please. Also, be on the lookout for tomorrow as you'll get another part of the series that Andrew and I did as we're actually going to talk about some relievers that the New York Mets could and should target and what it might cost. So again, let me know what you think about Jorge Lopez and Trey Mancini. And until next one, be safe, be smart, be healthy, and let's go Mets, go get Trey Mancini.